We are Sarva. The future of education starts here. Hello and welcome to this episode of Everyday Genius. I'm your host, Pete Craig, and today it's a great pleasure to welcome someone who, who was a pioneer of um, kind of the consciousness, um, the, the exploration of consciousness and using consciousness to, uh, to create the life that you want um, back in the 1990s. Yeah, and was using a lot of the technology that's now being used and is more commonplace um, way back then. Um, his mission is to like, provide or to share a, like, a solid and effective science-based uh, framework that allows people to understand how they can use consciousness as quite an ethereal uh, kind of concept to create uh, their life and to create the things that they want in their lives. So please join me in welcoming uh, Miguel Franco. Miguel, hi. Hi, Pete. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure being here in your podcast and I hope uh, we can explore together and see what what unfolds from our conversation uh, absolutely absolutely so before before we call out dive in i just want to give a little bit of like context i guess because um i'd never heard of you before um and 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 as we started yeah you know, like explore or launching this podcast and as we started like re-engaging with some of the projects that we were involved in um and I started to, we started to think much more about, you know, how we can help people can reconnect with their, yeah, their inner genius and reconnect with their, their wisdom. Um, that's when just out, out of the blue, you popped up and you started appearing in my, in my kind of social media. And as I looked into what you were doing, I think it was the headline kind of conscious, uh, conscious engineering that, that really caught my, caught my eye. And then when we spoke earlier uh, last week, you, know, you you told me that you'd only just started you know, kind of playing around and testing with those you know, with that marketing so yeah you know, I actually believe that you know, this was uh, this kind of meeting and you being here was was meant to be the timing was right for me and the timing was right for you so um, yeah I'm, I'm thankful for the synchronicities um, that conscious creation uh, brings us yes uh, synchronicities are such a beautiful um, it's more than a concept for me because it's more like a process in a sense yes. that we can in, induce in, in, a, in many ways, but most of the time we're not aware of it. Absolutely. I think, I think we just have to pay attention to the signs. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's it. That's it. And yeah, so, so why, the, the main reason I wanted to kind of bring you on was A, to kind of understand a little bit more about what it was that you were doing, uh, but also I'm kind of fascinated right now by anyone who has done study into um, into yeah, how we tap into whether you call it consciousness, whether you call it you know like uh, innate wisdom, whether you call it call it genius, creative genius, whatever it is that you call it. I'm fascinated by um, by anyone who's done any study or any research on that and has insights into this because this is one of the things that I think personally I think is missing in the world um, and especially amongst you know, the, the the next generation. We are. Uh, we're educating out of them the ability to to tap into that that very thing that we we're born with um which is you know, perhaps why the world's in in the state it state it is right now yeah what what are your what are your i'd love your thoughts on on that miguel yeah i think it's great uh that well in a sense that all of this current situation we are talking while we are going through a pandemic and and also the cry for um, social social uh, justice and, and more equality among human beings and i i really that i think what brought me out of retirement <laughs> in a sense you know because i feel really that in my whole lifetime I'm, I'm 64 now that this is really the main or the major opportunity that we have created for ourselves in a sense to to shift mm -hmm. into a higher level of consciousness you know and people talk about higher levels being something above <laughs> us or something like that but in a sense is is a frequency that is already here and all we need to do is to tap into it and allow that information to recondition ourselves in a sense uh you know so 
my interest, yes, it is to to provide perhaps the younger generation, you know, or, or yeah. that's coming to have a, a science-based framework and also practices and processes that are proven to to work with this energy, to work with this frequency, so they can take the necessary action to carry on the transformation because it's it's already going and it's been happening for a while it's just that now we are more aware of it or or most of the population are awakening to yes. this process so and my goal is to offer something that goes beyond belief systems goes beyond uh creeds you know or beyond um uh, woo woo and beyond yeah, yeah. All, all that stuff so that people can can be more neutral about that mm. and formulate perspectives that are more loving so you don't compete in a sense to own your truth <laughs> yeah yeah because there are gazillions of ways to define truth mm. <laughs> and to observe truth as well yes yeah now, I, I want to kind of like just um, just take you back a little bit because it's interesting what you said there about, you know, you wanting to create this, this kind of like framework, this logical kind of like science-based kind of like framework um, to make it easier for people to understand. And is, is, is your drive to do that, does that come from, because I know when, when we talked, you know, you're, you had from an early age, you kind of like had um, – Kind of a connection, a connection with that frequency that you're talking about, and you know, uh, it was kind of like misunderstood. And then you spent a lot of time kind of like studying how to uh, how to kind of like control that, um, and then became an engineer. Yeah, so, so is this kind of like born out of you know that that as a child that that not being understood and that um, that perhaps frustration with uh, with that and helping people to to then use use science and use engineering in order to actually instead of dismissing it as something that is, um, like we said, woo-woo, um, as actually something that's real, that they can harness and that they can use. Correct. Uh, yes, it was born out of that desire because when you attach yourself to philosophies or woo-woo or interpretations that where the power is outside of yourself, uh, it's, I mean, you lose your power, <laughs> basically. Yeah. You know, and then we we become subject to interpretations from other people, and 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 that creates division in a lot of ways because, you know, everybody wants to own their truth, and and that's what happened with all the philosophers and major religions uh, in the world. They didn't solve our problems if they were um, here. You know, I'm not denying their beauty. Mm. I think we we evolve from all of it. Yes. But the message I think needs to be up, upgraded or updated. Yeah. You know, it's like an app that you know. <laughs> let's down, yeah. download a new version here. And but you needed the, the previous versions. You know, I think that's how evolution takes yeah. place. Mm. So th that was my desire because I could really observe the struggle of people i mean i couldn't believe the wars that we had and all that that made me feel so sad you know and from a very early age and and discrimination and all that stuff i mean yeah. i grew up with what to the you know at that time was accepted normal this racism philosophy including that it was very present in my day to day yeah. Um, and people just take it for granted. And I said, no, this is wrong. Mm -hmm. And I suffered a lot because of my, my views, especially yeah. at home, because yeah. my dad was really, you know, that macho, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> white, yes. macho, you know, that kind of, but, um, and I challenged him and uh, my whole family on, on their take on, yeah what's normal and what's not normal <clears throat> and you you you, you were you originally you were born in brazil yes i'm yeah. originally from brazil yeah. i was born and raised in sao paulo 
the concrete jungle. <laughs> I think yeah. there's a, the, the city itself is about 14 million people and the great Sao Paulo is over 20, 22 million people. Oh, yeah. So it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's crazy. So, uh, yeah, I feel, again, you know, we, you, you talked a little bit about you know, the, this idea that you know, there's, there's the testing that, uh, that you do. And I, I remember it quite vividly because I, I made reference to you know, um, kind of Joe Dispenza and, uh, you know, the work that he does and looking for, you know, perhaps someone to, uh, to make a comparison to, you know, in the way that you're, look, you're using science. Um, and you told me that right back in the 1990s, even quite before you know, Dispenza really started um, putting his work out there, that you were using kind of like ECGs and you were using technology at that point to, to measure, um, measure transformation within people that you were working with. Yes, in terms of the brain waves, you mean, right? Yes. Uh, I started using biofeedback in, the, in 1993. Uh, when I had, I published my first book in Brazil called Perceptions or Percepções Portuguese. And, um, and, and that's, you know, and in the book I had several processes to um, describe our uh, perceptive mechanisms, right? So one of the things that I used at that time was um, a very simple EEG machine that I attached to my uh, at that time, a portable uh, Mac uh, laptop, which was a big one, <laughs> uh, yeah, and 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 um, in the serial port, uh, and and I start measuring the the brain waves of my students. You know, I, I did with myself, and then with with my students, and we could observe that, like in no time, I could bring people into theta waves. You know, like like in three minutes, they were already uh, accessing theta waves, and from there, uh, working on comparing perceptions from when they were fully awake and when they were the fully awake, no, fully, let's say, in beta, you yeah. know, like the, uh, and also when they were in theta, and how you could stay in theta by but being extremely present and awake with the information that was coming. And so it was like a deep state of relaxation, but a deep state of uh, presence and awareness. Mm. So, and, and I start relating that to health and other things too, and using quantum mechanics as a way to describe some of the stuff that I was talking about, Yeah, you know, and, uh, uh, my my earlier inspiration was in the late 70s i started studying with uh, the books from fritjof capra you know that, that he was the a precursor of yes, yeah. the, 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 this movement so that that put me in a line of study for the science aspect of it mm. and 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 i'm a mechanical engineer so i also combine my engineering background to formulate uh, processes to yeah. help people. So yes, that started in a major scale in 1993, major for me. I mean, like yeah. getting out of my little circle to be more present with a lot of people. Yeah, because that, that led to you know, a lot of work for you in the, in the corporate space as well. Yes, because somehow um, at that time, Brazil is much more open, I would say, to spiritual yeah. perspectives than America or any other place that I know of and and people uh, you know and somehow I think because I was an engineer um, and I lived in America at that time but I was going there frequently the uh, you know I had a, a lot of acceptance by by people in corporations and organizations mm -hmm. Uh, to learn more about the work because people start having more of a relaxed state. So the, the, the programs that I had was more focused in quality of life at that time and how to bring that quality of life in the workplace. So that's why I was kind of invited to, um, to a lot of work in a sense. 
And I was, uh, when I published my second book, In the Age of Intuition, that was in 1996, I had um, a lot of acceptance into this field. And I was invited to speak at uh, CONAR, which is the largest human resource conference in Latin America. And, and I was able to expose the work um, to, you know, a lot of a huge audience. people, yeah, yeah huge audience. <laughs> and, and that created a lot of interest in the corporate, mm -hmm. you know, for, uh, and, and I don't even consider my work mindfulness, you know, I think it's, uh, it's mindfulness on steroids per se, you know, it's yeah. like, because it's more like reading energy, how to read vibration, not yeah. only how to achieve a state of contemplation and, and observation. Yeah. So, uh, so that was the major difference. And yes, I did work with major global brands at that time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, so like initially, yeah, your your work was around kind of like restoring this this kind of like life life balance and bringing people this this kind of like, um, calmness, this more centeredness. So reconnecting themselves. Um, but it did, did at that same time. Did you notice that? Um, did you notice that when they were in those states and when they got to those places that there was also this expansion of their their creativity or and their performance? Oh well, yeah, definitely. And and that was the reason why people wanted me because in corporations <laughs> because it yeah. was all, all about you know increasing of course the well-being but again if you are feeling good with yourself you are going to be more productive anyway. Mm. You are going to be more creative anyway. Yes. So when you are in a relaxed state, you start making uh, better choices and having better ideas and all that stuff. So, and the processes that I created at that time was not like just to wait for the information, but to trigger or to activate the information and download the information. So you could take action on what you were receiving right. in the process. Yeah. And, and that led me to one, one of a kind project that I, you know, we talked a little bit yeah. about, but I'm very proud of it because it was very different. It was like being, being hired. I mean, as a Brazilian, we do have a passion for racing, right? Yeah. And, um, and I raced go-karts with Ayrton Senna. So I always had that passion of uh, and knowing how he he did it i mean from very early age you know yeah. the, the how to achieve those performance levels and i had the opportunity to train some formula one drivers indycar drivers with my tech knowledge and then i when i shared this uh i was approached by a company to create a coherent energy field in the company to to bring that performance energy mm -hmm. into the into the workplace, so I call I call it high flow performance because it is a state of high flow yeah. you, when you are in that process. It's not just being the zone. It's not that what I'm talking about. It's beyond being the zone because you can achieve that relaxation. But even when we drop out of it, um, the flow continues in another dimension. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it, it doesn't stop. Mm. Uh, so even if you, you can even get depressed, but you can be in high flow. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean? And, and that can get you out of it again, out of the depression mm -hmm. to be, to reconnect again, because you created momentum. And that's an energy field that we tap in and out, out of the, all of the time. Yeah. You know, and that, that I'm, I'm glad you kind of like transitioned into that because that was one of the things I wanted to ask you about because you, you kind of like downplayed it a little bit there by saying that you, you worked with them, but you also actually kind of like created a project that allowed you then to, to fulfill a dream of, uh, you know, of competing in, you know, uh, you know professionally as a, as a, as a driver. Yes, and thank you. <laughs> yes, I, I, I even feel emotions now <laughs> when I talk about this because it was really a dream come through. And, and um, so I had this dream because I, I raced with no money and you know racing and money goes hand in hand. If you yeah. don't have it, you don't do it. 
and and I couldn't afford at that time, you know, like uh, just did one season of go kart racing, and but it never left me that desire to drive. You know, I, I had it so strong in myself. So when I proposed to them to create this high flow thing, I said, well, can I be the role model? I would like to be the role model of this process because it was a year long program. So I created a structure of building a racing team where I would be the race car driver. I would handle the team and the whole process just to demonstrate what I was teaching. And uh, and there I was. I jumped into Formula Mazda, which at that time could compare to a Formula Three car, and with no, basically no racing experience per se on a race car and all that. Uh, I competed in a West Coast here in California in the in the championship, and I started in the the back of the field, uh, you know, and. Throughout the season, I, I progressed, and you know, I, the goal was to show how we can outperform ourselves when we are in coherence with the creative impulses that flow yeah. through us. So, I knew how to access my race car driver, you know, potential. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, you know, because it never left me since I raced go karts, and I was good at go kart. So. I, I brought that energy in and start showing that by being consistent, by, by developing that awareness of how to improve your performance by allowing that energy to flow through you, you know, uh, one can overcome any challenge, you know. So I end up uh, as runner up in the championship. I was fighting until the end for the points. Um, and I won a race and I was like kicking butt of mm -hmm. kids half my age. I was 40 at that time, 40 yeah. years old when most people retire. So most drivers retire and there I was yeah. starting, you know. So it, it was beautiful, it was beautiful. And, and I, I think I, I could really bring that process to the company you know to engage with and people engaged with me because of that because they were seeing me walking my talk and using what I was teaching them in terms of performance enhancement and and relaxation also for me driving a race car is like a meditation you know it's like I got in I get into this process I mean I don't I just relax with it yeah and I didn't crash. I didn't, you know, 19 races, no crashes, nothing, you know, just performing every time better than the previous one yeah. until, you know, be able to win and, and, and run in the gearbox of the pros. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So is, is this, you know, I, I guess the, I guess the kind of like crux of this is that, all of it, and we you kind of touched on you know, um, this idea of religion and these other these other kind of processes. What, what you're saying is all of this is within us already. We just need to access it. Yes, and in order to do this, I think the all we have to do is to develop our neutrality or our ability to observe without judgment. Mm -hmm. And and when we allow that, you know, to interpret an information without judging it. Uh, we can decide if is this for me is not for me is more so I don't go into the right or wrong is more like what's appropriate or not appropriate for any given time yes. so sometimes you make a choice that is appropriate and maybe later on that same choice is not appropriate anymore yeah so if you judge then you feel guilty then you feel resentful or whatever if you don't, you just forgive yourself and move on so you can bring a new energy in. Mm. So if you apply this concept for your everyday life, so you can live a life of observation and choice, you know, all the time. Yeah. And that that creates, uh, for, and for that to happen, you know, it's it, it leads you into unconditional love because you start loving yourself to, to a very high degree. Yeah, you know, to be able to to do this because life's changing, everything is changing, you know, and some 
what is appropriate is not appropriate you know so it's like uh, it's crazy you know yeah. uh, so uh, developing that self-love is the gateway to say higher consciousness because if you can stay with an open heart and today like people like heart mass they they show and prove that process yeah. of uh, heart coherence that by by developing your self-love you and it increases heart rate variability which is creates heart coherence yeah. and and the ma electromagnetic fields of the heart they really expand um creating those biofields and it is through these biofields that we can connect with um with much more neutrality say with the quantum field yes. so then we start to resonate or being coherent with quantum fields mm -hmm. that that have the realities say that you want to experience yes yeah yeah so then you start receiving from the heart and from the heart you bring into your brain so you allow the the heart really to be your guide and yes. to be to be the the vehicle that is going to reprogram your brain so mm -hmm. basically you access your super conscious mind which i is the is the what i call our being or our non-physical aspect that's coherent yes. with the quantum field you know the that spark of core energy which i call core energy the energy that powers the universe uh and when when you are coherent with that energy that energy basically is the precursor of what is yet to be yes so basically you become so intuitive uh about what is about to, hmm. to come to your life yes yeah yeah that this is the driving force and then you are become driven by 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 the heart basically and the heart is passionate is compassionate you know and and is accepting so it's a much more let's say joyful way to experience life so and when you are in this space i mean it doesn't mean that you are not going to have challenges or or setbacks or anything like you do yeah. but you you see that from a completely different perspective you know accepting yeah. that this is part of the process is giving you contrast to make new choices and that's how evolution takes place is through these these those experiences and this is why we have diversity you know diversity is essential for our evolution without yeah. diver diversity we don't have choices we would be just one pattern yes yeah you know because you have diversity and you have to make new choice all the time so we start repatterning all the time and that repatterning brings the evolution drives the evolutionary process yeah yeah that's that's but, how i see it no that's um yeah that's kind of um a beautiful explanation of that um so uh, yeah i guess yeah th this idea of kind of becoming uh perceptive um and uh, but in a non-judgmental way kind of is is the complete opposite of the way most people behave because most people have um when when something comes into their into their field of vision they're all, all automatically you know, kind of looking for programs or looking for memories to tell them how to deal with that situation and so you know, almost kind of, or it is uh, unconsciously yeah you know, they're they are making a decision their brain is making a decision to say um, whether that's right or whether that's wrong, whether it's good or whether it's bad, whether they should walk towards it or walk away from it. You know, all of those things are happening automatically. Um, and, and so I, I'm guessing th this is, this is, a, this is helping, or this is trying to understand and trying to unlock or un unpick, you know, some of those, some of that previous programming and previous behavior. Is that what, um is that what your kind of like your processes your systems are, are doing um in addition to kind of connecting with the heart and in addition to kind of like raising uh, raising frequency are there is it is it also working on that or do those dissolve uh, anyway once you connect to the heart well it, it is well um, perhaps both because uh, basically we are interacting 
let's say we go out and do our business outside of our meditation space or whatever, right? So you, uh, when you drop out of the warp speed there to get into the the life of the 3D world, uh, you, it's more difficult in a sense to sustain a connection with your superconscious. Mm -hmm. But when we train ourselves to start seeing life from our superconscious, it, it, you don't react as much. So you don't respond to situations or to interactions on, on let's say, on a reactive uh, anger, with anger, resentment, or whatever, you know, yeah. uh, or judgments. You start being more calm, you know. And I think that's one thing that people always tell me is, oh, Miguel, you're so calm. You're so, you know, but... Uh, it was developed. It, it is like like working out, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you you kind of create a process with yourself to to recenter. Like today, uh, I mean, more recently, say I I don't meditate or visualize. I don't use the term meditation much. I, my process is intentional visualizations because I usually get into this trance with an intention. You know, so, and I used to practice this for like for at least one hour, two hours a day. And when I was teaching more uh, live classes, say, I used to do this for three or four hours a day. Yeah. So four hours a day with my eyes closed, basically. Mm. You know, uh, today I don't do that as much because not only I think I became more in tune with this process, but also be because of the processes that I had to develop for myself. Um, and that can lead us into a different conversation, but, um, uh, but let's see if I can wrap this thought. Um, let's say using your everyday life or design or engineering your everyday life to support that info that you downloaded so you start seeing everything from that perspective most of the time even if you are in beta waves all the time you know what i mean so you don't, you don't need to get out of it and and even if you are out of coherence you start perceiving in a different way so you notice you are aware that you are not in full coherence yeah but also you are not desperate because you are out of coherence mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. you know that you can recalibrate your energy at any given time. Yeah. And for me, it takes like five minutes. Just I close my eyes a little bit and just recenter myself. And then I get back into that space. Mm -hmm. um, and I had to do that. And that's another reason perhaps to explain the brain connection that I had uh, a near-death experience when I was 20 years old, 21, uh, through a car accident. And I was like two days out, you know, like um, I lost consciousness. And I had a heal, I spent one year laying flat on a hospital bed without moving. Mm -hmm. And that was really, I mean, created a lot of what later manifested in my life as PTSD and I had a depression, I mean, the whole, a whole process. And I had no idea how much. Um, this brain concussion that was so severe and was completely untreated and undetected. And, and I mean, that was in the seventies. Nobody yeah. would even think about that. Um, how much it affected my prefrontal cortex. So I have still to this day difficulty in following to-do lists. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't operate much on a linear level. It's very, it's, it's harder for me. So to overcome that, what, you can call deficiency. So I, I kind of improved quite a bit the other aspect, which is yeah. to overcome that by bringing those creative impulses from the universe and allowing that to be my guide and what to do in a day-to-day -day basis without using too much of my, okay, kick this box here and that one, that one, yeah. you know, like, yeah. a, uh, and forget about to-do lists. I, I'm terrible with them. And so that helped me kind of repattern my brain 
and by doing this way, which in a sense, like uh, erased, not erased, but yeah, repattern is a better way of putting. Yeah. Because then I don't operate much from the subconscious level. So I, I have to operate more from our super conscious level. So basically I, I have more visions that I follow than just directions. Mm. Yeah, I understand. It's a different way of experiencing yeah. life. Yes, yeah, yeah. But, but if it works for a brain that was damaged, imagine for a brain that's healthy. Mm. Yeah, you know. so, so, so this, this really is about, um, is about edu helping so that the structure that you create is about helping people uh, see that it's that it's real first of all by putting it into a into a science kind of based uh kind of formula or framework it's allowing people to see that you know, if you do this then this happens yeah so they can't refute that fact and then and then showing them processes that allow them to get into that state where do this that happens uh, and then it's a case of them practicing that and becoming more in tune and more aligned with that that frequency, more aligned with that um, that part of them, uh, that that resonance, uh, so, and and developing that. So they get to they get to understand it. It's like learning a new language. You get to like you get to sense it, you get to feel it, you get to read it if you like, um, and gradually start to know. It's like those you know, I mentioned synchronicities earlier. It's about you know, so many people have synchronicities, they're all around us, but so many people don't see them. Um, and it's about that ability to then kind of pick up on those and actually see those not as you know, um, indiscriminate events, but as yeah, a, a message or as something that perhaps is opening a door to, to another reality. Correct, because um, we can say that we can use five intelligences in this process so basically we, we use our intuitive empathic and somatic intelligences we engage with them before uh, using our pragmatic and cognitive intelligences mm -hmm. you know so when when we are when we practice this more you know more regularly then it's like you experience being whole and complete because you, you feel really good and then your actions will reflect your inspirations, your genius that's coming through you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it, it, that's the, what I call the high flow performance state. Yeah. Right. You, start, you start high flowing with this because it, those five intelligences are coherent. Mm -hmm. You know, you create coherence between those intelligences. Mm -hmm. And I also use, in fact, uh, using the, the process of the body, in a sense, you know, to embody. That's what people call embodiment. And, and some people have a very hard time to understand what embodiment really is. Yes. But in a sense, it's, it's to bring that energy to... Um, and, and that you can bring Bruce, Lip, Bruce Lipton's <laughs> processes into the, you know, the, how the, the biology of belief, the biology of how this energy affects our biology, basically, yeah. you know, and our biochemistry and, and change and completely change our states. So, but it starts with the intuitive aspect, the empathy, uh, you know, by sensing energy, emotions and feelings, and by bringing that and allowing your body to to vibrate those feelings yes yeah and 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 when you have that uh and then you engage with your cognition and you engage with your pragmatism to get things done mm, so it's a different way of experiencing life yes yeah yeah and what what a you know, what are um have you uh, um, i'm guessing you know that you've worked with people you know in all si in all sorts of you know kind of positions um you know, but does this does this work in in every situation you know do you have you seen results for everyone that you've worked with or are there some people that are just so resistant that it doesn't it doesn't have an impact well i think it's like for everybody you know it's like you, you get 
out what you put in, yeah. you know, so if you don't do the work, no, it's not going to work. Mm. So I don't promise results to anyone. Yeah. And in fact, the results are the, the your intentions is not my intentions. I, I give the mechanisms yes. and, and also the framework, uh, not saying if you do this, you're going to make millions of dollars. No, yeah. it's, it's more like follow your heart. In fact, this thing about money is very annoying in, in a lot of ways yeah. because People only validate your bank account to say that your process is successful. But listen, I know and I worked with a lot of people that had a lot of money that uh, then they decided not to pursue that anymore. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, money yeah. be became a different thing for them. And, and because of this process and people who had no money making money, yeah. you know, so it, it, that's an, an example. So, but I wouldn't say no, not everyone uh, engages, you know, and, and, and in fact, you know, since I started, and, and, and this is recent for me that I, I'm coming back, say, <laughs> to, to, to the planet with uh, online courses and things, I see that, that some people bought my courses and never logged in. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, <laughs> So how can I guarantee yeah. the success? Of, I don't. of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it, this is, um, yeah, that that whole that whole piece of intent and that whole piece of uh, is is so important because people have to want it. Yeah, they, they've got to want to make a change. There's got to be a reason for them wanting to do it. Um, yes, and it, and also it's it, it's according to the time of that person. You know, yeah. I, my book was published you know, what twenty five years ago, I think, uh, and I still get letters or uh, people find me in the internet yeah. and say, "Oh, I read your book. Just this makes so much sense <laughs> now." I mean, twenty some years after the fact. Yes, yeah. You know, uh, but why? Because we are constantly transforming ourselves. Yeah. We are changing our our perspectives mm. all the time. You know, so people do change religion. People do change political party. They yeah. do change their soccer team favor the football yes team you know like you are constantly changing and evolving until and, and the same happens to this so uh, some people are, will apply or applies those concepts and will have different persp perspectives mm -hmm. and uh, many years after the fact yeah it can happen so i i, I think you know, something you mentioned there and that was you know um money uh, about money and i think you're you're absolutely spot on there i think yeah money definitely kind of skews um people's reason for being um and uh, and the intent behind what they try to do yeah and uh, and often yeah i see this all the time and i've experienced it myself you know you you try and force something and it doesn't happen yeah when at the moment you relax and you let go of it and you surrender to whatever's happening around you but yeah, that's the moment that things start to happen for you. And I was talking to my, my, my business partner earlier, Daniel, and we were talking about, um, talking about this, this very thing. And we were talking about uh, a guy called Manoj Bhargava. Uh, so Manoj is um, a billionaire, uh, made, made his money through, a, uh, through an energy drink um, and then made a pledge to, you know, take, he, he gave away most of his money and he uses it all to support um, support projects that that solve some of the world's biggest problems and and you know he kind of says that you know, without without trying to make money out of those things you know, he believes that those are the, the very things that will make him make even more money yeah, so those those things because he's doing them he's, he's not chasing anything he's doing it for love uh, but because they're solving such big problems yeah, um, he believes that you know, in time they will create you know, far more wealth, not for him, because you know, he, he's, he's kind of like gifted that uh, and anything that comes from that to, um, to continual kind of development and, to, and continual research. Um, he believes that will make far more money you know, than, than he ever could have made you know, when he was try, you know, trying to kind of like orchestrate and, and force things. So just you know, that, that for me was, was extremely relevant to what, we were just, what you were just saying, you know, that actually you know, sometimes people realize that you know, the, the money is not the important thing. Actually following what they're meant to do is the important thing. And quite often, um, once you go down that path and you find that thing, 
then you get rewarded and you get rewarded sometimes in monetary um, monetary terms uh, but it's it comes you know, perhaps because you're not chasing it anymore that's correct uh, um, again is I bring to the high flow uh, thing mm -hmm. because m money start high flowing towards you yes you know uh, not towards you it's like it flows through you yeah you know you become a conduit for it yes and we're not gonna take a penny when we leave this body yeah you know so why don't we flow it you know we can enjoy we can of course uh, and that comes the the consciousness process on this is like this this person that is flowing his money for to the betterment of the planet say or society and of course you have more because mm. that's exactly what he's doing he's not yeah. taking anything with him and he's just managing that flow yes. and uh and it's great when we find people like him mm. uh that can contribute to this but you see you need to have a consciousness yeah. of yeah. this process otherwise you won't do it you're yeah. going to use your money to manipulate to control and mm -hmm. and then we are getting back to the oligarchies that control this planet right yeah. now you know so yeah. uh, and that's why I believe this work is beautiful for entrepreneurs because once we start when we start stopping the chase Yes, and it, it starts flowing. Our lives improve, and more things. It's like already experiencing abundance. People talk about this, right? You have to feel abundant to have the things that you want. Yeah, and basically that's the state. You cannot be otherwise. There is no lack when yeah. you are high flowing. Yeah. There is no lack, you know, because it's flowing. There's, yeah. you, you can't do, you know, there's no lack. The water running through a river is the water running through a river. There's yeah. no, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. Even even if you encounter resistance, the water will find a way through it. Mm. Yes. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I, I think, um, yeah, I mean, that, that's a quite a beautiful um, quite sentiment to, to, to wrap things up on. I think, yeah, the, the idea that, yeah, um, yeah we uh there, there is no lack yeah and that everything is is within us you know we just need to we just need to become more aware and uh and tap into to what's there uh accept what's there and uh and, and interpret it yeah but that's the main important point because this is the transformation of the planet mm -hmm. when we all get it that there is no lack there is no need to control there yeah. is no need to manipulate yeah. There is no need to hoard things, you know. There is no need to uh, create caste systems. There is no need to. So that's equality. Yes. A abundance equals equality. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. and and basically, it is a state of consciousness. It's yeah. nothing more than that. I'm not saying that people we all have the same amount of money in the bank. No. But if we are, we all have abundance or experience that flow. Yes. You know what I mean? No, no one is better than you. Yeah. Mm, absolutely. And, absolutely. Um, just, just before we like, yeah, wrap up, um, I'd love to ask you, you know, what, um, what words of wisdom you you might want to kind of share aside from aside from all the kind of wisdom that you've just shared with us yeah if there was if there was one thing that you had to share with someone yeah perhaps perhaps looking back on yeah, things that you wish you'd known uh or that you um yeah you'd wish you'd known sooner or you you wish you'd tried sooner yeah what, what would that one thing be well i think following the path of the heart is the main important thing you know if you to allow that wisdom of the heart to really guide you yeah. through through the process because the heart doesn't lie to you. The brain does. Yeah. The heart doesn't. And um, and I think that's the main important thing to for me that what drives my work and my whole mission is to have an open heart, to really have that unconditional love or, or practice unconditional love as much 
as we can, yeah. uh, you know, not as a concept, but as, um, as a process even, you know, it's like going out there and, and okay, I'm consciously flowing this love. I'm going f towards myself, which is going to raise your self-esteem and self-worth. So you are going to be more valued. You are going to value yourself so others can value yourself too, yeah. you know. So I think that's where what is really important because when you do that, you don't need any validation from outside of yourself. Mm. You validate yourself, you validate your existence. So you become really aware and present, present to why you are here in this body. You know, Beautiful. yeah, that, that's, that's, that's perfect. Um, yeah. An, an amazing like message and a, an amazing way to, uh, to end um, yeah this this beautiful interview um, I thank you so much for uh, for joining us and for you know um, joining us as you start to uh, as you start to come out of your your retirement and share share your message again I'm uh, I'm extremely honored and uh, it's been a pleasure to to kind of have these uh, these couple of calls with you and uh, yeah I, I'm really looking forward to kind of seeing uh, seeing your message continue to to, uh, to be shared and uh, your work to kind of continue to have the, the impact that, uh, that the world needs right now. Well, thank you so much, Peter. I mean, really, this is really like an honor to be here and to share this message. Yes, and I feel good that I'm, my hermit days are coming to an end. <laughs> and, and this for me is a major transformation in itself, just to put myself out there. And, uh, and I appreciate every opportunity and the opportunity that you are giving me to share my thoughts with your audience. Thank you so much. Fantastic. We'll put some links um, for anyone who's interested in learning more about uh, about Miguel or learning more about his work. Uh, we'll put some links underneath the podcast. And uh, yeah, I encourage you, if you feel called at all, if you feel connected to anything that, uh, that Miguel said or shared, you want to know a little bit more about this uh, um, this quite high flow performance uh, matrix that, uh, that Miguel's quite referenced a couple of times. Yeah, then, uh, then yeah, you know, I encourage you to like get in touch and uh, and follow uh, follow his work and see how you can get into those states too. So thank you so much for listening, everyone. Thank you again, Miguel. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. We are Sarva. The future of education starts here.